Beauty. All right, mate. Thank you very much. Mystery box. Where from? It says Priority Mail United States Postal Service. Perhaps. Could be anything. Oh, it's looking, it's looking pretty vintage. Let's give them a look. Let's give them a look at this. Today should be a pretty big day. I'm gonna go and pick up something off Facebook Marketplace that I'm pretty confident will make us over $100 in profit. So I'm gonna go and pick that up now. And then I've got like an hour up my sleeve. Courtney starts at 11 today. So I'm just, I'm just trying to work out what to, what to do, how to best utilize my time. I'm always trying to think about how to line things up to get the most out of the day. And today is a big day because we need to ship off the Monday orders, which I think over the weekend we had about 26 sales. So I'm gonna to have to try and get them, get them done and to the post office by three o'clock because I'm pretty sure through speaking to the guys on Friday, they said that the post leaves by three o'clock each day. And if you miss three o'clock, you miss that day. It sits overnight. So I wanna try and get that gone by three o'clock this afternoon, which should be fine with Courtney starting at 11. We're gonna film the what sold this um, episode though. We'll, we'll film a few items that have sold over the weekend. And then I'm gonna to need to keep on top of our listings as well because we need to make sure that we can list 15 every day, 105 for the week. And I'm just, I just don't think we've got more than about 20 items at home at the moment to be listed. So it means we need a good 85 listings as well today. How you doing, mate? How are you? How's things? All right. You good? Me. That's all right. Uh, just to go quickly pick up. No stress. All good, my man. Beauty, mate. Thanks, Eves. That's, so good. that's all care. yours. Much appreciated. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, brother. Yeah, that's how it Have a good one, eh? All right, so just knocked down a bit of a bread and butter run there on Facebook. There's a bunch of games here. I don't believe, you guys will let me know, I don't believe any of these games are worth any significant value, but that was a large part of his collection. Um, it wasn't what I was after though. I didn't buy it for that reason. I like the look of these games. Uh, I think Forza Horizon's about a $25 game on the Xbox. Uh, it's not a great cover, but a Forza Motorsport 2, I think you can get about 15 for that. And then a very quick sell through rate, $15 on Skate 3. So those three games there alone are worth, you know, 50 55 dollars um so that's sort of a bit of a, a bit of a money back play um there were also three call of duties as well um i might do these as a bit of a bundle i don't mind doing call of duty bundles they seem to sell pretty well for me so not 100 percent sure the value in there but maybe 30 to 40 dollars for those three and then i've also got a mortal Kombat complete edition there which generally goes pretty well the condition of the disc is good unfortunately there's no manual in there that is as well wasn't the reason why I picked up this buy. I picked it up because there was this, which was Halo Xbox 360 wireless controller. As soon as I saw this make of controller, I knew it was Halo. I've seen them in the past sell for really good money on their own. Uh, comps on eBay between 60 to $80. So the only issue with this is it is missing a little rubber pad there. Um, you can see it's been sort of over there it's missing this rubber pad. So it's an easy fix for somebody out there. I reckon I can sell it for $50 as it is without trying to go ahead and touch it up. So that was the reason why I thought it might've been a money back play uh, on this bundle. There is another 360 wireless controller in here as well. Um, I paid $50 for everything. I probably should say that. Um, so in my mind, when I was looking at the deal, I thought it was a bit bread and butter. I didn't think there was anything too significant, but one listing to get your money back. And then we can go ahead and lot up all of these games and, and list up the other ones that I, I spoke of individually. So, you know, I don't think it's anything too crazy. I don't think it's anything to get excited about. It just keeps the dream alive and we can keep having some stock to list up on eBay. Video games are my second best selling category. So I'm, I'm confident in the category. I'm confident with these sorts of titles because I've sold them in the past. Um, so yeah, Monday morning, a couple of listings we're calling in a list up this afternoon. Not too bad. I think I've got about 45 minutes up my sleeve before I'm meeting up with Courtney for the Monday morning meeting. So I'm just going to dart into, there's a very cheap thrift store up here, really low prices. 
And I think they do get pretty picked over as a result of that. But, you know, while I'm here, two birds, one stone, I think it's a really good way of being efficient with your time is if you're going to another location, there's a thrift store along the way and you've got yourself some time up your sleeve, I think it's a smart move to just drop in. You never know what you'll find. So it's literally right here. Let's rip in there right now and hopefully add to this little Xbox collection that we've just been able to pick up. So the first item I came across were these Adidas Ultra Boosts and I always generally pick these up but I'm definitely picking them up in this store because I think they're only $4. Um, the condition of these were good albeit they were a little bit dirty. Um, so if you put these into the washing machine, they'll clean up pretty well. Um, size 10 as well is something I always look for. So I'm going to go ahead with these. I did have a look at all the other shoes you can see on the rack there. But usually when I go into this store, it's only one or two shoes that I pick up. Um, so on this occasion, the Adidas Ultra Boosts were the winner. And then I found this one as well. It was a brewery, um, Cooper's uh, Brewing Cap. And I always look for the alcohol hats and um, all the brands typically do pretty well. This one... This one I just randomly comped up, but I'll tell you guys in a little bit when we get back in the car how much it's actually worth. It was pretty damn surprising. Thank you. Uh, $5. Just on the card. Okay. Thank you. So, you know, four bucks. Good pair of shoes out of that Ultra Boost, but this was the surprising one for I think a lot of you guys out there. It literally looks like nothing at all. There is no structure to this hat. There, it, it, it would it could, it would have cost Cooper's Brewery, uh, brewery maybe 10 to 15 cents to make this. Yet on eBay, it sells for about $35. Multiple comps on eBay. Anything beer-related, I'm always looking at the hats, especially beer-related hats. Always typically sell pretty well. Um, this Cooper's Brewery was a surprise, but I'm going to list it up for 35 free postage, and I'm probably going to get it. So, you know, that's two listings. I'm going to call the, the Xbox buy eight listings so we're up to 10 and if you're doing this casually part-time whatever the case may be you might be only listing three items every single day or at least you should be listing three items a day to, to hold some consistency you know you only need to have 21 items a week and i've just found 10 there in really limited effort from going into a thrift store and picking up something locally off facebook marketplace so I would only have to put in that amount of time again once over to get my 20 listings. I would then go home and I would list out those 20 listings and it might take me an hour and a half to two hours. But I've done three listings a day scheduled for seven days. So you can make some serious money doing that if you're consistent for a really long period of time. If you did it for a year and you just had three listings go live every day with simple stock like this, you would be very shocked at how many items would start to turn over for you. So... I really hope that this, this little mini piece of the video to begin with here is just a really good accurate representation of, you know, you can grab small, seemingly insignificant items that actually do go on to sell really well on eBay. And with your consistency of input, scheduling out two or three a day, you can make some great money. Okay, so we're pretty good for time. Just pulling up to the uh, local shopping center now where I catch up with Courtney for an hour an hour's meeting to kick off the week, a bit of a, a recap and a projection um, on what the week was and what the week will be. And uh, also too, just find out how she's going as well, how her weekend was, um, you know, what's new in her world as well. So it's a really important opportunity. You might think, you know, you're, not, you're paying her to have a coffee with you, but it's, it's a whole lot more than that. It's a really crucial hour's meeting that I like to do every Monday morning with her. And then we can go and just crush the week ahead and we're both on the same page. Uh, with what we're trying to achieve. Um, Chia has been great as well. I probably don't get to talk about that enough on this channel in the sense of how it's gone for, uh, you know, Courtney working for me for the last year. And it's the first time I've ever had anyone work for me. It's the first time I've ever been, you know, a boss to somebody. Um, and it's, it's, she's made it easy because she's, she's just been great to work, to work with. You know, she, never misses a shift she knows the game she knows what we're trying to achieve and she's pretty good at listing up and shipping off of the items that we need to do as well so i can't i can't knock her in any regard and that only makes my job easier as well so um keep these monday morning meetings rolling and hopefully things just remain as they are because uh, it's going well what's not going well though is finding a car park my goodness
Now, this is a little bit unrelated, but I wanted to settle a debate that Courtney and I have been having over the last couple of days. Courtney reckons, you should, you should say what you reckon. Well, you buy skinny milk, what is that, two litres? Light. Light milk. Low fat. And what do you, what do you read that you reckon? Well, so I'll put a screen grab here of the full cream milk. And I buy this low fat because it says that there's low fat, three grams, and saturated is 2.3 grams. But Courtney reckons that the full cream milk is the answer, even though the sugar content is exactly the same. I just think, I'm probably going to get grilled in the comments of this, but I just think that whole foods always are better for you in moderation. Like, you shouldn't have too much of anything, but it should... I just think light, skinny dairy in any type is not as good as just normal straight away full cream so what i'd like to do <laughs> is i'd like to get thoughts and opinions in the comments section below oh god do you do you drink or have full cream or light hey hayden <laughs> hayden is your house mate yeah he's not there uh, anyway let us know Hey Hayden, do you have um, full cream or light milk? Typically? Light. Light? light? Yeah. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez, 2-1. Let's see what the comments say. Uh, all right, sorry about that. Well, let's, get in some, let's get in some sales. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to take you through six sales. Now, earlier in the day, I found a box it was a perfect fit for these DVDs. Look at that. You can't, you can't plan that sort of thing. That's just incredible. Um, so what it is inside is every single episode of the TV show Bones. Uh, we've got seasons 1 to 12. It sold for $55. Uh, I, I put a video out on Thursday, which was a how-to guide of um, DVD selling on eBay. And this was one of the steps. When you go over nine DVDs, it is always easier and better um, to put them into a box. So 12 DVD sale there, whacked them into a box. It's worked out perfectly. Um, anything less, you can play with like medium and small satchels, uh, but that, that will be fine for that one. Uh, cool sale at $55. This one, the next one I want to talk about, we've got the Dark Knight movie variation of this little figurine. Um, now that, this one actually fits perfectly into this box. And what we're gonna do, or what Courtney is gonna do, is we're going to be using this uh, butcher's paper to just infill the box and then we're going to use uh, bubble wrap to wrap around the actual item. So Courtney uses a lot of butcher's paper, don't you? Butcher's yeah. paper, bubble wrap, cardboard box um, for anything that we need to do in a box. I've got a bunch more down here. I wouldn't say that they're the best sale uh, or the best item to buy. Um, you can see here we've got another five to sell, so six. So that means... That means we've now sold half of what we bought. We bought 10 for $5 each. We paid 50 bucks. Uh, and, and now we've just sold one there for $38. So 38 bucks for one is, is not bad. But what I'm thinking about a whole lot more when I'm sourcing items is sell-through rate. Yeah. And the sell-through rate for those just hasn't been good. So, I don't know. Once they go, I might drop the price and just get them gone. But if I saw them again, I probably wouldn't buy them. Um, but the $38 sale price is still pretty decent. Um, which one next? DVDs. Hey, Charm, Puff and Stuff, your favourite movie, TV yeah, show. Yeah, I love it. You love this one. Uh, the complete series of Hey, Char. Um, we, we got this one in a, a recent DVD um, haul where we were out at a book fair, a uh, Lifeline book fest at Carrara Markets, and we were picking DVDs for a dollar a piece. This was sitting in there, and in that beginner DVD how-to guide uh, video I put out recently, I always look for the complete series, and I say that a lot on this channel because it stands to be true. This one here sold for $70, and we bought it for a dollar at that book fair. So a lot of results have come out of that video. Um, there's some really good titles to go and check out. Um, this one here is how we go about sending these single DVDs. We just whack it into that, that medium tracked envelope. I've spoken about that so much on this channel before, but we do get a lot of questions about it. Um, this is the next one here. We've got Mortal Kombat X. This was a cool sale. Uh, it was a cool find, actually, to be fair. It was um, a steel case variant, which is always worth a little bit more money. Had its manual uh, and all the details. And the disc, the disc of this was absolutely mint. 
as you can see there, completely mint disc. Uh, we listed this up for uh, thirty nine ninety five, and we took a best offer of thirty five dollars, um, which wasn't too bad considering we only bought it for a couple of bucks. So look out for your steel cases. I've actually been sourcing just through accident a lot of. Um, uh, we've got, had a lot of like, those steel cases without the discs in them. Yeah. And they still sell for 15, 20 bucks a piece, but even better when you've actually got the game in there. Um, so that was cool. The other one that I wanted to show you is this right here. This is Tommy Bahama. And now this is a 3XL. Um, Courtney was mentioning before, the reason why this one sold is because it's silk. Uh, it's 100% yeah. silk. This, unfortunately though, does have a couple of stains, as you can see there. Uh, a couple of stains. But as long as you're going about the process of just showing that with, a, with a, an individual photo to say that it has some stains or doing a bunch of work before, before you go and list it up uh, to clean it out, uh, you're going to get this thing sold. We took the option to just list it as it is, show the stain marks, and we still got a $49.95 sale price. So I found about six or seven of these in a local thrift store at $10 a piece. Paid about $50 or $60, but I knew that Tommy Bahama is a great clothing brand, and I knew that silk material is a really good material of clothing. Um, and that's that's to be purchased even though we're sort of phasing out of our clothing. Over here, over here is a look of just how little we have in clothing. Like, there's now not a whole lot in there. It's half a tub full. And we used to, back in the day, if you're a viewer of the channel from a few years ago, uh, we used to have cupboards full at mum and dad's place. Um, this used to be complete tubs worth of clothing, but it's just been sold out and condensed into hopefully just the best of the best now moving forward. Um, just like that Tommy Bahama shirt that we spoke of for $50. If I see a $50 item of any description in a thrift store and it's only $10, I'm going to pick it up every time. Um, the other one that I wanted to talk about <laughs> is, uh, is the Brooks Transcend 7s, these running shoes. Uh, so they're a men's nine, no, women's nine, sorry, which is a good good size for women's. Um, underrated brand is the reason why I wanted to talk about this one in this video today. Brooks underrated category, uh, or, or make of shoe, I should say. These are all the shoes, and uh, I didn't tell Courtney during our one-hour catch-up for coffee, but we are running a 15% off special right now on shoes, and we're also running a 15% off special on the hats and uh, accessories, uh, whatever they deem to call an accessory, they're on sale as well um, for 15% off. So hopefully, even though we had a couple of shoes uh, additional sell over the weekend on top of these Transcend 7s, uh, hopefully there can be a, sh a few more shoe sales. We are also running a Black Friday sale. So this 15% off special is going to run until the 23rd of November, and then we're going to be ending that special, and then we're going to be launching an entire store-wide 40% off special. Um, so that will hopefully generate a bunch of sales to end the month, 40% off store-wide. We did it at the start of October. Uh, we put a video out about it as well, and we had some good numbers, didn't we? Yeah. 2,000. Yeah. Two grand in sales in two days. Um, so it definitely does work. It's not a profit exercise. It's a cash flow exercise, and that's, an, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with cash flow exercises. Um, so hopefully we can have the same sort of results over four days. We might do four grand. That'd be pretty cool. Mm. Um, that, is, that is six items, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's the lot. Courtney's now going to jump in, knock the post over in record time, and then we've got a bit on the floor here. Um, stuff that we grabbed earlier today. I was telling, uh, I was telling the audience at the start of the video, Courtney, around this hat selling for thirty-five dollars. Yeah. And you just wouldn't think it, would you? No. But thirty-five bucks in there for that hat. That should do well. We've got a lot of hats up here that we're trying to sell, and then there's a bit more stuff here magazines as a is that listed that homer yeah you have listed that so is yeah. this all listed uh not the shirt terminator i think is yeah the terminator is not those not those no put them there um we've got a have we got a plush oh here problem with the plush has slowly died off as well yeah just got the one one tub there for plush toys now how's that not sold i know that's got to sell if anyone wants that We've got it. Um, oh, speaking of buying and selling things, Courtney, mm. we want to do some, some hauls. Hauls of what? Some private picks. Oh, yeah. We yeah. want to get our two biggest selling categories. We want DVDs and we want video games. So if you guys out there 
for whatever reason are chasing a few dollars over the next couple of weeks and you want to get rid of some of your inventory, uh, Courtney and I are on the lookout for those two categories. We're after TV shows and we're after video games of any different console make or model. Uh, maybe even some consoles as well. Um, so yeah, if you do have some stuff that you would like to sell, we're open to purchasing. Hit me up on Instagram at the Aussie Flipper. Um, if you're local within, say, a three-hour radius of the Gold Coast, uh, I'm willing to commute out there and, and have a bit of a look and, and do a deal. And if you want to be on video and make a video out of it, we obviously want to do that as well. Um, but yeah, Courtney, heap of posts to get into. Yeah. Anything for Matt? Unit three. All good. All right. So, I'm going to do some thrifting. I'm going to go through some thrifting because I really, I like Courtney to list up 30 on a Monday because then she doesn't work on Tuesday and I can typically work on this video that I'm filming with you now. I'll edit it on a Tuesday and then try and post it on a Wednesday morning. So, if she doesn't get the 30 listings done on a Monday along with the post, then I'm caught doing all of that on the Tuesday and then I don't get as much time to put into the video. So, that, that works really well to kick the week off and the more listings that I can find at the start of the week, the better, which is why I put the call out there for the private pick. If we can get a private pick or two once a week, then we'll pretty much be right for the whole week. Um, so I'm gonna go out and do some thrifting now. On a Monday, my local area has three thrift stores basically on one street, uh, and one of them is closed on a Monday. So I just do a really short, sharp run, just go into two thrift stores. I'm gonna go in there with you right now, and I'm gonna pull away as many items as I possibly can uh, that have really good sell-through rates and have a really good profit. I really want a high average sale price because more and more over the last few months, I've been focusing on just trying to raise that number, um, which isn't going to be as drastic of a number as you might think because I am still playing in the DVD category predominantly and the DVD category is naturally a lower average sale price sort of a category. So I'm going to be aiming for kind of $20 plus DVDs and then video games that are worth $25, $30 or so um, in the media sort of area. Um, and then obviously whatever else we find that turns out to be a banger. So. We'll end that little chat there and I'll see you in the first store. I've got a good feeling about this. It just looks like there might be absolute bangers hiding in here. I've found some really good stuff in this store over the years. Today just could be another one of those. Oh, actually, yep, check this out. Check this out. That's worth a lot of money. You see it? That thing, the boat. Let's go and have a look. Looks like it's in pretty good condition too. It's even got that little thing on the side. Mattel 2011 Disney. Don't know how much it's worth, but... Oh no, there it is. Three dollars. Happy days. The other item that I was a little bit interested in was this DVD player. There was actually a few DVD players, uh, all with their remotes as well. So in the past, I've always been able to make some good money on these, albeit they are pretty frustrating to ship off because of the size. But for $7, I wanted to sort of search this up to see what it was worth. And if you're unsure about how to find the model number, it's always on the back of these devices. Um, I found it, I had a bit of a look, but in the end, I passed. I've actually passed on the pirate ship. I think I just dodged a bullet. Yeah, it's just a very big bulky item and that's one thing that I've stopped doing over the last few years is just dealing with tough postage items. You pay a lot in post and you also just have to stuff around with putting them into big boxes and using all your bubble wrap and butcher's paper and sticky tape and yes it was only three dollars but time is also a very important part of the process and that's why I love DVDs and video games because there is 
a very time efficient process to listing, sourcing, selling, profiting in those categories. So it's one of those scenarios where I saw it at three bucks just sitting there and I'm like, I know that thing's worth 50 to $70. I just, the sell through rate would have been fairly slowish, I feel. It wasn't complete. I know that as well through doing a bit of an assessment over it. There was some parts missing. And it was a talking device as well. And the one that I had out there was not talking. So I don't even know if I would have got full price. And then it would have been a lot to ship off as well. So that were my reasonings for leaving it behind, which I think are pretty, pretty fair. Uh, I also saw some, some DVD players in there, which is again, old Matt back when he first started selling on eBay would have just lapped that up for $5 and $7 electronic devices for sure. Uh, but over time, I've stopped sourcing those for the same reasons that I just mentioned to you about the pirate ship. Uh, just big, bulky, heavy items, costing a lot of money. You can't really do international shipping unless the buyer pay, pays an arm and a leg to get their hands on it. Um, so I left that behind for 5 to $7. There wasn't any crazy comps on eBay for the DVD recorder, which I thought might have been actually worth a little bit of money. If it's not just a playback, but it also records DVDs. Um, but it was only worth like 45, 50 bucks. So for seven, I don't know, I just didn't think it was worth the trouble of having to ship it off to somebody and put all that time into that. So we came away empty handed is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Thought it was gonna be promising. We've only got one store left to check out. Fingers crossed we can come away with something. We're at the second and final thrift store of the day. Wish me luck. One thing I always do at this thrift store is I head over to this DVD rack because they're all priced super cheap. They're a dollar a DVD actually, so some really good value, but they tend to often put their movies out the front. Um, they're fully aware. So I went inside and I went over to where you can often find a lot of the TV shows and video games in this store. These would have only just put on would have been only just put on the shelf because they were brand new and sealed, but unfortunately they're priced up at $15 and they're only worth about $25 to $30. Um, I didn't know that at the time, and when I, I'm yet to do my comp research, I tend to look through items that I want to do some scanning of, and then as you can see here, I'm just putting them to the side. So then I go back in and I continue to have a bit of a further pick through. I found these as well, which I thought have been, might have been of some interest. The Librarian on Blu-ray, it was brand new and sealed for all three, I think it was movies. Um, but again, they're pricing that up for $15 as well, which is pretty steep. The Xbox, um, sorry, Xbox, the X Men trilogy, uh, this set here as well. I, I didn't think that was going to be worth a lot of profit when it's a fifteen dollar, you know, asking price. But I put that to the side as well, and I was, I was going to comp them up. Unfortunately, spoiler alert: all four of those uh, weren't weren't worth it at all. So I'm still looking for my first purchase of the day here. Um, I kept having a bit of a look. I moved the DVDs around. These DVDs have all been here for quite a while. You wonder why the thrift stores don't go ahead and just drop the price because clearly they're not selling. You can see this is just sort of a mismatch of different DVDs and movies uh, and no one is coming in and buying them. So I was looking for stuff that I hadn't seen before. Um, these were just put on the shelf but none of them were worth any value as well. Fortunately after doing this for a few years I do have a bit of an eye for what could be profitable and what might not be but if you're brand new to this I would, I would get the, the, the eBay scanner out and I would just start scanning some barcodes to get yourself some education around what is good and what isn't. Um, here's a really good example of a, a TV show called Outrageous Fortune. If you had all, all six seasons I think of this TV show you can go, go for about $90. Uh, but these three mixed seasons, they just weren't worth the purchase price of 2 to $4 each. Um, there was this one in here as well, another good TV show, American Pickers. Um, the American Pickers, you, you'd want to be finding more than that. Um, and the price point of that at $12 to or a $15 purchase price just wasn't going to be profitable. Um, this one here as well, Porn Stars. Again, there's more seasons of this show out there. So for this purchase price of a couple of bucks each, I just ended up leaving it behind based on the comps that I was able to see from it. Um, so I kept having a look, really frustrating not to find a bunch of profit when there are just so many DVDs in this DVD rack, um, but in the end I've unfortunately come away empty handed. Well, absolutely no luck in there, um, which leaves me thinking I need to go and check out a third store because I don't like to be completely defeated on donuts for two stores and call it a day. I need to get something out of this trip, I need to get something out of all thrift trips that I go on. Um, so there is another one just up the road. It's like maybe five, 10 minutes away. So I'm just gonna pounce over there now and come away with something.
We're going to get something in this little hole, guys. This is genuinely, though, the realities of thrifting full time. You don't go into every single store and come away with absolute bangers. And I'd, I'm probably a little bit guilty of just highlighting only that on this channel. And I really want to kind of bring more of a realistic approach to the video, especially with this video. This is just a day in the life of what we get up to. And sometimes you find it's a little hit or miss in thrift stores and you're relying on deals like Facebook Marketplace. Fortunately, we got that deal earlier today. So it hasn't been a complete you know, loss of day in a sourcing aspect because they were some really good uh, video games that will sell for great money and that controller will get our money back. So I'm so confident in that buy. But I would like to top up a little bit more today with a couple more items. It's just, it's just been frustrating on a pricing aspect and uh, just a quality aspect as well so far today. But that is just part of the game. You've got to sift, you've got to keep digging, you've got to keep looking. So I thought I should ran into some luck here. We've got Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister. And I did some research on this and even though it was only $5, the comps on eBay were about 15 to 20 bucks, which was really surprising. I thought that might have been worth a little bit more. It was only a Region 2 copy, which I don't always like to pick up, um, but I would have if it was were going for a little bit more money. Um, plush toys, I've got to get myself away from this category. Um, this one here, just this miniature. Um, Seven Dwarf, I just left that one behind. I thought I'd done really well here of God of War. I thought this was going to be our first find of the day, but God of War doesn't sell for as much as you would think. It was only about a $15 game, and they were asking $8. Had a look at all these Blu-rays. There was nothing in that as well. So this has just been a really, really tough afternoon. All right, a couple of developments off camera. Firstly, didn't find anything in that store. So out of feeling sorry for myself, I went and bought Courtney some listing fuel. So she's got a bag of lollies, just standard party mix, all the favorites. And then I have got for myself, for the drive home, a packet of twisties. Probably gonna feel worse about myself having those packet of twisties, but I needed to come home with at least something. So Courtney's got lollies, I've got twisties. I thought that was it. And then the lovely lady at this Vinnie store that I know and, and work with, she was having lunch just at the cafe that I was in grabbing all the lollies. And she said, oh, hey, Matt. She goes, I've got some DVDs out the back that we can't sell because it's R-rated. And I know that some of these stores out here do that. I'm getting into some twisties. But I didn't know Vinnie's did that. I thought it was like the small church shops. Man, cheese is so much better than chicken. And... um. She goes, would you be interested in Game of Thrones as an example? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, how long? And she said, oh, I've only got five, ten minutes left on my lunch break. I said, I'll go eat a few twisties in the car and I'll meet you in five, ten minutes. So opportunities like that. Hopefully there's a few more things. Hopefully there's a few more things for us to be able to pick up, not just Game of Thrones, albeit I'll buy it because we're on donuts today. But if I just went home after two stores, what, what we're about to hopefully find wouldn't have been able to happen if I didn't push myself to the third store. So we'll see what happens. Twisties are worth it. And just like that, we've been able to make it work. Big thank you to the guys at Vinnie's. Been able to get a really good hook up there with a bunch of really good TV series that all go on to sell very, very well. And it didn't take very long for me to find. I was able to just go through those tubs, notice the one or two that I knew were pretty good, 
and then they've been able to look after me as well by allowing me to have it for a pretty decent price. So I'm gonna get back home now, give Courtney her, uh, her listing snacks and get her to list them up and hopefully have them sell just like a few of the others that you saw in the What Sold video. Beauty, all right mate, thank you very much. Mystery box. Where from? It says Priority Mail United States Postal Service. The Could be anything. It's pretty heavy. It says Scott Keeley. Scott, Scott. the Cha Ching King. <laughs> this is one of the nicest guys in the world. We'll stop listing for a second and we'll uh, crack this one open, eh? Scott was t so you can you can tear this open. Mm -hmm. Scott is the Chiching King, and he's the guy that I met when I was over in the states in August. And he said to me that he was going to send a bunch of like random vintage clothing. Are we filming right now? Huh? Are we filming? We're on. Oh, we're I thought on. he was talking to me. Oh. I am talking to you, but we're also recording. Go again? We don't need to go again. <laughs> We don't need to go again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, this is this is what he's got for us. Oh, Vinton. Apparently. Can I open that? Give it a crack. You can unbox it. <laughs> Get into it. Thank you very much, Scott. Yeah. The Cha-Ching King. And he is one of the nicest guys in the world. So, go and give him a subscribe. I'm going to link his channel uh, in the description below. Oh, it's looking, it's looking pretty vintage. Let's give them a look. Let's give them a look at this. That's what we're looking at. We've got some clothing. Mm. We've got some clothing. That's all we can see. <laughs> and some of them. What's this one? Oh, that's cool. Walt Disney. First one up. So oh my god, you can feel it. It's vintage. Just old, hey? Yeah. What's the tag say? Haynes? Show, uh, show the tag on the camera there. Haynes, poly cotton. So it looks pretty old school to me. You've got some jer I love all these American tags. Look at this. Made in USA on this one. Yeah, same. Jerseys, double XL. What's that one? Eminem. Eminem, safety is accident. What does is that mean? Single stitch. Yeah, it's yeah. single. It's a single stitch. Waco, Texas. Yeah. I have no idea what it means. This looks cool. This looks awesome. We've got a Devil Rays. Yeah. Nineteen ninety nine Devil Rays. That must be a baseball team. Uh, maybe an old baseball team. It's got Russell Athletic on the tag. Hold that one up there. Size extra large. Dated, dated 1990 as well. And really cool little Russell Athletic there on the on the sleeve too. So, I don't know. I don't know how much. I have literally no idea what any of this would be actually worth. Well, vintage. It's vintage though. Mm. This one's very cool though. I don't know. We'll have to look in. We'll have to do our comp research, but it's cool to see. Now, look at this. You should pull the hats out. My goodness. <laughs> Scott knows I love my hats. Let's crack into them. I love this one, first of all. Western Division Champs 1986. Hold that one up. That's awesome. Houston Astros Baseball. Is that, I, that it? I think that's what that is. I shouldn't. I'm, I'm not a huge baseball fan. Tampa Bay Bandits, 1982 trucker hat. You can see all like the wear and tear of the of the hat underneath there. Yeah. You can see it's all like breaking away. It's actually. So was that like 40 years old? Yeah. Literally 40 years old. USFL. Hold that one up. That's awesome though. Tampa Bay Bandits. I like the colours on this one. Mm. Houston Chronicle. Number one with a cool little logo. Now the Boston hat, Boston uh, Red Sox, I think that is. Is that so, baseball as well? That's baseball. They'll torch us, hey, if we get these wrong. Oh, yeah. We're going to get the teams right, don't we? <laughs> Got the milk already, too. The what? <laughs> the milk. <laughs> yeah, well, the milk will be an interesting one. Get your comments in on don't the Don't want to read the comments. <laughs> Courtney's been nervous all afternoon since no, we no. put that into the video. Uh, I love this one. Yellow New York Post. Yeah, that is cool. That is rad. I might actually wear that now. Like the font. Good fit. 
Tighten it up. Yeah, it's a bit big. What else you got? The Quality Link Enterprise Transportation. Another trucker. Is that like a power company though? Yeah, I'm actually not too sure. Enterprise Transportation, the Quality Link. Don't know, just some old vintage hat. Still cool. FedEx. Got a FedEx hat. It's our Australia Post. FedEx, that's cool. I don't know if FedEx hats go hard or not. Mm. But Oh, check this one out, Courtney. <laughs> Look at this one. Boston Celtics. Hold this one up. This yeah. is an old school vintage. Show them the tag there. Boston Celtics vintage hat. That is so far. I should have put that one on instead of this. Yeah, that is cool. Oh, this is cool too. Super Bowl Miami Dolphins. Vintage. One of these hats is dropping a lot of <laughs> shit. That is cool though. Yeah. Miami Dolphins Super Bowl hat. Made in USA. How you How do you say that? Haiti. 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 Made in Haiti. Is that the USA? No. No. I don't think so. It's good by you. <laughs> <laughs> this is one we had before. So we've got two of these. Oh no, this is 1983. Oh, what was the other one? I think it was older. Oh, the bandits I was thinking of. Mm. So this is the Houston Gamblers. I have I no idea who they are. Do you know who are they? Baseball. Oh, yeah. cool. They're pretty good. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I'm not sure. Houston Gamblers. That's pretty sick. Yeah. 1983. It's a shame they're breaking away like they are. Yeah. Oh, well, what, can you, what can you expect? Some more Houston Astros. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Cool colour, made yeah. in Taiwan. Is that in America? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Another Damn, one? they're breaking away a little bit. What's that one? Another Astros? Yeah. So a couple more Astros hats. So I don't know how many hats are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen hats, three pairs of clothing. I reckon this New York Post hat was pretty cool, but I think this Boston Celtics hat is yeah. sick. What do you like the most? Um, what would you wear? I'd probably wear the New York Post. You'd wear this? Or this. Or that one. Or that one. That one. That, that, this one. Maybe. Try it on. Oh, no, I can't see. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter. Oh, my head's too big. No. Yeah, I've got a big head. The big head? Yeah. Oh, yes. I like the orange? Yes. That's good. You could list with that hat on. Houston, is it? Houston Astros, baseball. Cool. Scott, thank you very much. So cool. Incredibly appreciated. Don't know what we're going to do with all of this, as in, do we list it up and try and make as much money as we possibly can on it? Do we... Could we do something for the viewers? Hmm. Do Could one giveaway or something. Pass it on, right? Not all of it. Not all of it. No. Courtney's all about the money. No. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I reckon we give, what do, what do we want to give away? Give a really vintage hat, I reckon. This one's pretty Tampa sick. Bay. You reckon Tampa Bay? Or 1983 Houston. Oh, okay. So this one, 1983, which one's better, Nick? This one. All right. We're going to give away a Houston Gamblers, I, th I don't know what sport that is, Gamblers, but yeah, it is a, it's an old school, very old school vintage 1983 hat. Um, Houston. I don't want to wreck it. It's so old. What actually, no, I'm going to change it. I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do this one because this is a badass hat. We've got oh, that NFL? Oh, USFL. So this is a, like a local um, gridiron team. Oh. That's cool. I'm actually going to do this as a giveaway because I think this is a rad hat. It's the Western Division champs of 1986, Houston Astros, and they're playing in the MLB World Series. At the moment? At the moment. Yeah. So this is a relevant hat. Yeah. This is a good team. And it's made, it says quality caps by George. I don't know what tag that means, but it's in great condition as well. Mm. What should they do to get it? What should, we, what should we do for them? They get that. Yeah, how? What do they have to do? Um, you have to comment, Scott, what's his name? Scott Keeley. Keeley. And nah, Chiching King then, hey? Chiching what? Chiching King. Chiching King. Comment that. Comment that and subscribe. Yep, I like it.
Yeah. And subscribe to Scott. Yeah. Both channels. Yeah. And we'll check. Yep. We'll check. We'll check. We'll pick a winner. We'll check to make sure that you've subscribed to us. Subscribe to the Cha-Ching King, Scott. And you'll be in the draw to win this with the code word Cha-Ching King. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. You got more listings. Yes. You got 15 more. Yes. All right. So that was pretty much a typical Monday. Um, Courtney's going ahead and finishing off all of the listings. Um, I, at this point on a Monday, would typically go up and edit the video that you're watching right now, which takes a little bit. Um, and then it might go into Tuesday as well, but it's been a bit of a different video today. It's been obviously a lot more drawn out. I don't think I've had a video go this long on the channel before, but I said to Courtney that we'd just trial a longer format video. So hopefully you guys are digging it. Um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes and then may continue with it. If you want us to continue with it, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you want to see. Yeah, let us know what you want to watch. Um, but yeah, that was a typical day in life. Thanks for being here. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Scott, the Ching King. We'll see you in the next one.